welcome i welcome you all to this lecture in the course samasa in paninian grammar <clears throat> we begin our lecture with the recitation of the mangala charana vishvesham satchidanandam वंदेहम योखिल जगत् चरीकर्ति बरी भर्ति संजरी हर्ति लीलया विश्वेशम सच्चिदानंदम वंदेहम योखिल जगत् चरीकर्ति बरी भर्ति संजरी हर्ति लीलया वी आर स्टडिंग तत्पुरुष समास इन दिस कोर्स इनिशियली वी हैव स्टडीड द ओवरऑल थियोरी ऑफ कंपाउंडिंग एज स्टेटेड इन द पाणिनियन ग्रामर इन दिस कोर्स वी ऑल्सो स्टडीड द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ सामर्थ्य एकार्थी भाव एंड व्यपेक्षा we studied the sources namely the great uh, vyakarana mahabhashya of patanjali which said that the word samartha in the sutra samartha padavidhi can be interpreted in four ways sambaddharth sambaddharth and samprekshitarth that interpretation would explain द व्यपेक्षा लक्षण सामर्थ्य एंड संगतार्थ एंड संसृष्टार्थ वुड एक्सप्लेन द एकार्थी भाव लक्षण सामर्थ्य वी ऑल्सो नोटेड डाउन द फोर ब्रॉड कैटेगरीज ऑफ समास इन संस्कृत दे आर अव्ययी भाव तत्पुरुष बहुव्रीही एंड द्वंद्व we said that amongst these four tatpurusha samasa occupies a special position this seems to be the most productive of the samasas and one of the other important features of this samasa is that the number of sutras panini has composed in order to explain various processes involving the derivation of the tatpurusha samasa are quite num numerous in comparison with the other samasas <clears throat> the process of tatpurusha samasa derivation can be explained in the form of an equation in this particular manner where we have two independent two separate entities x and y put in separate uh, square brackets the plus sign indicates that they are semantically interrelated x has a different independent meaning y also has different independent meaning x has different independent accent y also has different independent accent the word forms are also unique and different and independent of each other so each one of them has a distinct identity now the speaker thinks that these both entities should be merged together and one new entity needs to be generated in the speech perhaps as a variation in order to express certain meaning 
So x and y, they are put together and a new entity is generated. This is x, y. This is one word form denoting one meaning and also having one accent. So this is one entity. Out of the two entities as input, the output returned is one entity x, y. This process is called Ekarthi Bhava and also there are three features of this Ekarthi Bhava discussed in the tradition namely Aikarthya or Ekarthata, Aikapadya or Ekapadatta and Aikasvarya or Ekasvarata. So these three features are part of this x, y as an output. In the Tatpurusha Samasa, amongst these two constituents x and y, it is y which assumes the headship semantically and that is why it is highlighted with bold letter x, y. And now if x, y is to be related with any other external world, with any other external word, it has to be through Y, which is the head. Then we were studying various kinds of Tatpurushas. Prominent amongst them is the Vibhakti Tatpurusha. And this Vibhakti Tatpurusha also highlights the fact that the Samasa is based on the Karaka theory and the fact that sentence is the input and Pratipatika is the output as far as the compound derivation theory is concerned. Amongst the Vibhakti Tatpurushas, we have so far studied Dvitiya Vibhakti Tatpurusha, Tritiya Vibhakti Tatpurusha, Chaturthi Vibhakti Tatpurusha, Panchami Vibhakti Tatpurusha, Saptami Vibhakti Tatpurusha, and now we are studying the Shashti Tatpurusha. Dvitiya Vibhakti Tatpurusha was stated by a bunch of sutras beginning with Dvitiya Shritatita Patita Gatatyastap Prapta Pannaihi. Trutiya Vibhakti Tatpurusha was stated by another set of sutras beginning with Trutiya Tatkritarthena Gunavachanena. Chaturthi Vibhakti Tatpurusha is stated only by one sutra Chaturthi Tadarthartha Balihita Sukha Rakshitaihi. Panchami Tatpurusha is also stated by a few sutras beginning with Panchami Bhayena. Saptami Tatpurusha is stated by a number of sutras beginning with Saptami Shaundaihi. Shashti Tatpurusha is stated by the sutras from 2 to 8 to 2 to 16, but there is only one sutra, Shashti, which prescribes the Shashti Tatpurusha Samasa in a very generic nature. We have already studied this in the previous lecture and there we said that the Sutra Shashti consists of only one Pada namely Shashti and this is in the Prathama and therefore the Subanta which ends in Shashti is termed Upasarajana Prathama Niradishtam Samasa Upasarjanam and then this Upasarjana occupies the initial position of the compound by the Sutra Upasarjanam Purvam and then the process continues. So there is only one Sutra 
Shashti 2 to 8, which prescribes the Shashti Tatpurusha compound. The rest of the sutras, they negate the Shashti Tatpurusha compound. And this goes to show the overall scope of the Shashti Tatpurusha compound because the meaning of the Vibhakti Shashti is manifold. Shashti Vibhakti denotes relation in general, relations between nominal roots and nominal roots. And these relations could be of several kinds, Janya Janaka Bhava, Swaspami Bhava, Avayava, Avayavi Bhava, etc., etc. We also then studied one sutra which negated the Shashti Tatpurusha Samasa, Na Nirdharani. In the same context, we also studied a statement which says, Pratipada Vidhana Shashti Na Samasyate. This is extremely important and this negates the Shashti compound. Now, let us continue and study the next sutra which negates the Shashti compound with the following elements stated in this sutra 2 to 11. So the sutra 2 to 11 reads like this Purana Guna Suhitartha Sat Avyaya Tavya Samanadhi Karanena I repeat Purana Guna Suhitartha Sat Avyaya Tavya Samanadhi Karanena 2 to 11 Of course in the sutra there are no two padas, there is only one pada, which is Purana Guna Suhitartha Sat Avyaya Tavya Samanadhi Karanena. This is instrumental singular with all these and these types of words. That is the meaning. Words continued are Sup and Sahasupa and Samartha Padavidhihi is always there. The other words continued are na as well as shashti, which is in prathama ekavachana. All this put together, the meaning of the sutra is the following. Any shashtyanta subanta is not compounded with any other interrelated subanta having purana etc. as features. So purana is a kind of meaning. Guna is also a meaning. So Hitartha also refers to the meaning. Sat is a technical term denoting two suffixes. We shall study this now. Avyaya is a set of elements also known as indeclinables. Tavya is a suffix and Samanadhikarana also refers to the meaning, co-referential. So, Purana etc., these are the features of the Subantas and such Subantas do not get compounded with the Shastyanta Subanta even though they are semantically related. So, the semantic relatedness which is a precondition exists and yet the compounding does not take place. That is the reason why this sutra is stated. So what is Purana etc? Let us read that. Purana refers to a process where the cardinal numbers are added with a suffix and they are turned into ordinal numbers. We will study this now. Guna refers to a quality so, Hitartha refers to the synonyms of Suhita that is beneficial. Sat refers to two suffixes denoting present tense. These are the Krit suffixes. Avyaya refers to an indeclinable. Tavya is a kind of Kritya suffix meaning object and the state. And Samanadhikarana means co-referential 
having the same substratum co-locus also means having the same case ending. Let us study what is Purana. So Purana, as we said earlier, is a process which denotes the ordinal numbers. This is the term of suffixes in the sense of order added to the numbers. They are stated in 5248 up to 5258. The sutra is Tasya Purane Dati. So Purana is the meaning. Completion of a particular number. Tasya Purane Dati. So we have the word Panchan which means 5 and now if we have to say the 5th completed that means the order is to be denoted and somebody is standing on the 5th position then we will add the suffix dat to it and then there is a sutra Nantada Sankhyadera Mat which will add the augment ma and then we shall get the form Panchama. Panchama means fifth. Panchan means five. Now this Panchama can be related with the Shashti in the sense of Nirdharana as well and some other senses as well. Avayava also. Similarly, Dashan is the number word denoting ten and following the same process you add the suffix dat after dashan and then add the augment mat nantada sankhyadir mat and then you derive the form dashama dashan means 10 dashama means 10th 10 completed now this dashama can be related with the subanta ending in the shashti and there could be semantic relatedness in the form of avayava avayavi, etc. Similarly, you have the word chatur, meaning four, and then shat kati katipaya chaturam thuk. By this sutra, you add the augment th, and then you add the suffix, of course, add the suffix dat, and you derive the form chatur th, which means fourth. So now even the feminine forms are there, Panchami, Dashami, Chaturthi, etc. They are also derived in accordance with this particular process described just now. Now when these forms come in relation with a Subanta ending in the sixth case, for example, Chatranam Panchamaha, Chatranam Dashamaha, fifth amongst the students, tenth amongst the students and then here there is semantic relatedness and so the compound is possible but 2 to 11 says that this compound is not done. This compound is not derived by the speakers of Sanskrit. They have not thought about these meanings to be expressed by the process of compounding. So there is no compounding happening in this case. So the other Purana suffixes also follow suit and there is no compounding with them with the Subanta which ends in the sixth triplet, Shashti. Then we go to Guna which is a quality. So we have the word Karshnya which means blackness. The synonym of this would be Krishnata. Similarly, you have Shauklyam, whiteness. The synonym would be Shuklata. So now you have Kakasya Karshnyam, Balakayaha Shauklyam, and Kakasya and Balakayaha. This is a Shashti. And there is the Avayava, Avayavi Bhava relation. And so there is semantic relatedness. So there is possibility that both the words might get compounded 
In fact, the Sutra Shashti also lays down the condition for the compounding of these two words, but the speakers of Sanskrit have never thought about bringing these two elements together and forming a compound. And so that decision on the part of the speakers of Sanskrit gets reflected in this particular sutra, when the sutra says, Purana Guna, and this is not compounded with the Shashti. Similarly, the next term we had in the sutra is Suhitartha, which means synonyms of beneficial or satisfied, Suhita. Suhita means beneficial or satisfied. And the synonym of Suhita would be Trupta. And so, Falanam Suhitaha or Falanam Truptaha. So here, Suhita and Phala, they are semantically related. The beneficialness or the satisfiedness comes in relation with the fruits. When one sees the fruits of one's action, one becomes satisfied. That is the meaning. And so, Falanam and Suhitaha, Falanam and Truptaha, these two are semantically related. So, the Sutra Shashti would prescribe the compounding. However, the speakers of Sanskrit have never thought of merging these two elements together and forming a compound and therefore that decision gets reflected in the form of the negation presented in this particular sutra of the process of compounding. Then we go to the next element which is negated and that is Sat. Now Sat, as we said earlier, is a term that refers to two suffixes denoting the present tense. The sutra defining Sat is Tau Sat, 3 to 127. Tau is a pronominal reference referring to the two suffixes stated earlier in 3 to 124, namely, Lataha Shatrushana Chau Aprathama Samanadhi Karane. So in the sense of present tense, Shatru and Shanach are the two suffixes which are stated in place of the Lat suffix when they also mean Aprathama Samanadhi Karana. So when Aprathama Samanadhi Karana is the environment that is fulfilled, Shatru Shanach are the two suffixes which substitute lat. Now, Shatru has sh and ru as the markers. Shanach has sh and ch as markers. So the suffixes which are visible in the form used in the usage are at and ana. So we have kurvat and kurvana. These are the shatranta and the shanajanta words. Now we have Brahmanasya Kurvan and Brahmanasya Kurvanaha. These are the two elements. These are the two Laukika Vigrahas. And here the meaning is somebody who is doing something related to a Brahmin. So there is a general relation of the action of doing and Brahmin and the relationship between Brahmin and the action of doing is not explicitly explained by the words over here. And so in this case, Shesha relation is maintained. Therefore, there is Shashti. Otherwise, this Shashti is also negated by another sutra, Na Loka Vyaya Nishtha Khalar Tatrunam, etc. But there it is said that if the relation meant is a very generic relation, then this Shashti takes place. But such a Shashti does not get compounded. That is the point. So Brahmanasya Kurvan and Brahmanasya Kurvanaha, even though semantically related, 
so the sutra shashti would prescribe the shashti tat purusha samasa but this sutra says that such a samasa is not thought about by the speakers of sanskrit so there is no compounding then we have avyaya which is indeclinable avyayas are stated in a small section beginning with 1137 up to 1141 khutva to sun kasuna is one such sutra 1140 so we have brahmanasya krutva and brahmanasya rutva krutva and rutva are the are the pratipadikas which are derived by adding the suffix tva to the verbal roots kru and ru and so we derive the forms krutva and rutva now these are related to brahmana in the shesha format and so there is semantic relatedness and so sutra shashti would say that these two get compounded and then this sutra says that such a compounding is not thought of by the speakers of sanskrit so there is no compounding that takes place finally we have tavya which is a kritya suffix which is stated by the sutra tavya tavyani yaraha 3196 now this suffix means karma and bhav object and the state of being so we have the forms brahmanasya kartavyam and here there is semantic relatedness the duty of brahman and there is this shesha relation that exists so there is shashti and there is semantic relatedness so the sutra shashti states the compounding but this particular sutra negates this compounding and so we don't have brahmanasya kartavyam getting compounded there is one important point to be remembered over here the sutra 3196 says three suffixes tavya tavya and aniyar technically although tavya and tavya are formally same namely tavya there is this small marker that appears at the end of the first suffix tavyat the purpose of this t will be clear now now the shashti tatpurusha compound is negated only with tavya and not negated with tavyat so brahmanasya kartavyam this will not be compounded if this kartavyam consists of the suffix tavya so we need to also record the derivational history of the forms but if the history reveals that the word kartavyam is derived with the suffix tavyat then there would be compounding that takes place and we'll have the form brahmana kartavyam now what is the difference between tavya and tavyat the difference between tavyat and tavya is that of accent the tavyat is accented with a final swarita by the sutra tit swaritam and so in kartavya we have this final swarita whereas tavya is accented with an initial udat by the sutra adyudatascha so here in kartavya we have this a uh, as udat now when we do the compounding the final swarita will be retained in accordance with 6 1 39 pratikarak upapadat krut and so we'll have brahmana kartavya with the final swarita as a part of the compound finally we have samanadhikarana co-referential co-locus having the same substratum so if we have radnya pataliputrakasya rajan and pataliputra ka they both are referring to one and the same entity so they are co-referential so there is samarthya there is semantic relatedness similarly paninehe sutra karasya there is co-referentiality and the sutra shashti is prescribing 
the compound between these two semantically related words. But this particular sutra says that such a compounding is not thought of by the speakers of Sanskrit. But if the Shashti is indicating the different substrata, then the compound is possible. Samanadikarana is not possible. So Rajnya Purushaha, Shashti is there and there are two different substrata, Rajan and Purusha. And so the Shashti Samasa takes place. To summarize, there are numerous negations to the Shashti Vibhakti Tat Purusha. Accent plays an input for the process of compounding. It is assumed that Shashti Vibhakti is stated on account of the compound negation statement. In case of Sat, Shashti Vibhakti is stated in the sense of general relation. We continue studying these negations of Shashti Samasa in the coming lecture. These are the texts referred to and thank you for your patience.